for our next news special report. Now we're diving deep into a story of Vivek Ramaswamy, a man who didn't just speak up, he roared against the mainstream media's storm of falsehoods. As you watch, remember, this isn't just about exposing lies, it's about the battle for the very soul of our republic. Vivek stood, water in hand, calm yet unyielding as he dissected each fabricated narrative with precision. His fearlessness in the face of overwhelming media bias is not just commendable, it's a beacon of hope. And by the end of this report, you'll see why Vivek's words resonate with so many and why his message is crucial as we approach 2024. Stay with me because the truth, my friends, is about to be laid bare. Now, before we dive into Vivek Ramaswamy's groundbreaking revelations, let's talk briefly about truth in another vital area, our health. Just like Vivek cuts through the media's misleading narratives, we too need to sift through the countless anti-aging products that promise miracles but deliver little. I've come across something genuine. It's a special type of collagen. This isn't just any product. It's a testament to seeking the truth in a sea of exaggerations. It's proven to maintain skin elasticity and combat aging, much like Vivek combats falsehoods. And right now, there's an exclusive 53% off at healthwithgary.com, so don't miss out, just like you shouldn't miss the truths we're about to uncover. Now, tonight we turn our focus to Vivek Ramaswamy, a figure emerging as a fearless warrior in the fight for truth against the biased media. A beacon of integrity, Ramaswamy isn't just challenging the status quo, he is tearing it down piece by piece. His latest encounter with the press wasn't just a discussion, it was a master class in exposing media deception. Ramaswamy, in his signature calm demeanor, posed a question that echoed like a thunderclap in the halls of misinformation. Quote, Who here is willing to admit that the Trump-Russia collusion hoax was incorrectly reported by the mainstream media? The simple query cut to the heart of the matter, highlighting the media's relentless campaign of deceit. The mainstream media, once guardians of truth, have become purveyors of narratives, often at the expense of facts. This fearless pursuit of truth isn't just commendable, it's a lifeline in an ocean of misinformation. And Ramaswamy's approach is a stark contrast to the media's sensationalism. While they thrive on chaos and confusion, he offers clarity and insight, urging us to question what we're told and seek the truth beneath the surface. Here is that moment. If this is okay, and uh, I'm just kind of curious, on the, the previous question that you yeah. asked those four things that were provably false. That, that yes. That were in the, and I'm just kind of curious. I know some of these guys, we've been following some of you guys. I'm curious if there's any national media who actually believes that they were that those, that those were I'm, Actually, it's a good question, Eddie. So Eddie's a, one of the, you guys are colleagues, colleagues, two of the top state reps here. And I think that that's a good it's a good thing to be curious about. Just by, by show of hands, who here is willing to admit that the Trump-Russia collusion hoax was indeed incorrectly reported by the mainstream media? Is there anybody here able to admit that that was incorrect reporting? It wouldn't be really appropriate for us to answer a question. Why not? Why would that be inappropriate? I think it would be inappropriate. What's inappropriate is lying to the public. We're, just, we're doing our job asking you. The public lied to or did the, did the media report on the set of facts that were provided? So, I, so that's, that's a fair question. I actually think that the public was lied to long after the media systematically still understood that this was the product of the Steele dossier. The Steele dossier was a piece of Russian disinformation provided by the Hillary Clinton campaign that was served up to the federal government as a basis for issuing a FISA warrant to then potentially infiltrate a member of the opposition party. If this was Bush and Cheney doing it to John Kerry, this would have been the stuff of scandal, impeachment and worse. And yet I think it was an intentional lie that the media said that that account, which we now know to be true, was actually the Russian disinformation. Now, Shauna, I would be charitable in my interpretation of that if it were just one instance. Let, let me give an easier one, just by show of hands. Does anybody believe the media's reporting about the origin of COVID-19 ran flatly in face of the facts that you have a Wuhan Institute of Virology that was now the likely origin of the COVID-19 pandemic? You all said that it wasn't for a long time. By show of hands, was the Wuhan lab the likely origin of the COVID-19 pandemic? Everybody, media or not? So, so you have reported, the same media that has reported that the COVID-19 pandemic did not originate in a lab in Wuhan, 
is willing to even say, un unwilling to admit today. The report came out in 2023, so I guess... It was known that there was a Wuhan Institute of Virology where they were conducting gain-of-function research, the very city which was the origin of a global pandemic, and yet the media's explanation was that somehow it could have been any source other than actually having started in a lab. I just think that that's systematic, systematically unacceptable. The Hunter Biden laptop. Is the Hunter Biden laptop story, as reported by the New York Post, which was shut down, had the Twitter account locked, for anybody who is even sharing the story of the Hunter Biden laptop found on the eve of the last election, the media reported that it was Russian disinformation on the eve of that election. Does anyone here agree that the Hunter Biden laptop story, as reported by the New York Post, was indeed accurately reported and was not Russian disinformation, but was in fact a factually owned laptop of Hunter Biden. I mean, you, you got to, man. I mean, you, your paper reported it. <laughs> does, anybody, does everybody else seriously not believe that? I mean, I believe so, that Hunter Biden is suing Rudy Giuliani over the laptop, so I don't think that's... So, so you don't believe, so you think that it actually was the product of Russian disinformation, as was reported by the media, that was the basis for suppressing this at the time. For the Hunter Biden case, yeah. I'm not sure why we're talking about that. Because it was election interference on the eve of the last election. And I think there's the same kind of election interference happening this time around. And I think it's happening the early waves of it with respect to the treatment of my candidacy. And I think that that is likely to be a major problem heading into the next year, unless we're able to open and openly and transparently acknowledge the mistakes of the past. Without acknowledging the mistakes of the past, I think we are destined for an even more dangerous future. And I do not want to see a repeat of what happened in the 12 to 15 months leading up to January of 2021. I don't want to see that in this country. And I worry we're on a path to far worse than that until we have accountability, 360 degrees, for the mistakes that were made in that lead up. And the Hunter Biden laptop story and its suppression, Shauna, I do believe was a key part of the lead up to that. I think the suppression of the origin of COVID and the origin of the pandemic was a key part of the lead up to what happened in January of 2021. I think that the systematic suppression of speech in this country, even about debating the lockdowns, was a key part of what culminated in January 6, 2021. And as somebody who's looking to lead this country and hopefully, dare I say, reunite this country, I think it is critical, it is vital to the future of this country that we not repeat those same mistakes. And yet that's exactly what I'm seeing play out in slow motion, hiding in plain sight. And so it's my concern for this country that leads me to run for U.S. president. It's my concern for this country that causes me to raise what aren't some ancient issues to be swept under the rug. I think that history is relevant to what's happening today. In this climate of censorship and media manipulation, Ramaswamy's stance is more than brave, it's revolutionary. He's not just speaking against the media. He's challenging a system that's become entrenched in its own narratives. His casual sip of water during these confrontations isn't just a physical act, it's symbolic of his unflappable nature in the face of adversity. So let's dive deeper into the specifics. The Trump-Russia collusion narrative, a tale spun with more twists than a Hollywood thriller, was more than just inaccurate reporting. It was a deliberate misinformation campaign. The media, once watchdogs, became lapdogs of a political agenda, barking up the fabricated tree while the truth lay buried underneath. The Steele dossier, cornerstone of the false narrative was a concoction of unverified claims, yet it was presented as gospel by the mainstream media. The tale so riddled with holes, it wouldn't hold water. Yet it was used to unleash a torrent of baseless accusations against a sitting president. Ramaswamy's critique goes beyond just pointing out these falsehoods. He's urging us to wake up to the reality that the media, once a pillar of our republic, is now a platform for propaganda. This isn't just about political bias, it's about a systematic erosion of truth. And the implications of this media manipulation are far-reaching. Consider the Hunter Biden laptop story, a saga of censorship and suppression that played out in full view of the public. The media's initial dismissal of the story as Russian disinformation was not just erroneous, it was a deliberate attempt to sway public opinion and influence an election. Now, friends, this is not just a conservative issue. It is an American issue. When the press abandons its role as a neutral arbiter of facts, democracy itself is at stake. Ramaswamy's battle isn't just against media bias. It's a fight to preserve the very essence of our republic. It's not just about past events. As we look towards the 2024 election, the lessons from Ramaswamy's confrontations are more relevant than ever. 
The media's role in shaping public opinion cannot be understated, and their bias has the power to sway elections. The question Ramaswamy poses isn't just rhetorical. It's a call to action. It's a challenge to the media to return to its roots of unbiased reporting and to the public to demand nothing less. In a world where narratives are increasingly weaponized, his voice is a clarion call for integrity and honesty. But why should we care? Well, because the truth matters. In a time where facts are often twisted to fit narratives, Ramaswamy's commitment to honesty is not just refreshing, it's essential. His willingness to stand up to the media juggernaut is a reminder that one voice can make a difference. As we delve into the issues, it's important to remember the core of what's at stake, our right to the truth. The media's distortion of facts isn't just a political problem, it's a threat to the very foundation of our society. When truth becomes a casualty of bias, democracy is imperiled. Ramaswamy's crusade against media bias isn't just about exposing lies, it's about reclaiming the truth. In an age where misinformation runs rampant, his voice is a beacon of hope, guiding us back to a place where facts matter and truth prevails. If you got value from this report, tap subscribe. My final thought is next. In closing, let's reflect on the significance of Vivek Ramaswamy's crusade against the false media narratives. His fearless stand is more than just a battle against biased reporting. It's a fight for the soul of our republic. Ramaswamy, like President Donald Trump, represents a beacon of truth in a sea of media deception. Their efforts are not just commendable, but absolutely crucial in an era where the truth is often obscured by those with hidden agendas. Ramaswamy's unwavering commitment to exposing the truth is a testament to the strength and resilience of our nation's foundational values. His actions remind us of the importance of questioning, challenging, and confronting the narratives that are fed to us. As Americans, we must stand united in our pursuit of truth and transparency, especially as we move towards the 2024 election. Ramaswamy and Trump's fight against media bias isn't just their battle, it's our battle. For the truth matters to every American. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. Now keep up your quest for truth with this next news report. And if you found our channel enlightening, join the millions who agree with you. Tap subscribe. Thank you for watching the Next News Network.